Here we go! Well, in typical Gamer Blake fashion, I'm once again late on reporting on my latest discussion for Sonic Frontiers. Not that there's anything groundbreaking to share in this video, as nothing was revealed from Sega, but we did get an article from Games Radar earlier this week that shown some light on what we can look forward to from the game, even if not by much. I considered not making a video about it at first, but after some thinking over, I decided, uh, why not, let's just go ahead and talk about this. But with that, let's check out the article in question. This article by Games Radar is titled, With Sonic Frontiers, Sega is focused on bringing Sonic to the next level. Funny considering the Sega of Japan just opened a website with a tagline, Welcome to the Next Level, which you can see on the latest wallpaper for both mobile and PC users based on Sonic Frontiers. And isn't there another Sonic game I recall where that was an exact line of dialogue from Sonic while he was talking to Shadow? Hmm, the fact that I even mentioned Shadow ought to be a dead giveaway as to which game I'm talking about, so I'm not doing a good job being ambiguous, am I? Either way, is the article right here, big in 2022, Sonic Frontiers will leverage PS5 and Xbox Series X for a high fidelity, high speed, and high energy experience. It is great to read, but I also think this could already have happened during the previous console generation, except Sonic has had such a limited presence on both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. In fact, call me crazy, but since both of the consoles came out in 2013, I think they've only had three Sonic games released for them. Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces, and Team Sonic Racing, from 2017 to 2019. That is definitely what you would call a lost opportunity for Sonic to capitalize on the graphical capabilities of both those consoles. They're a step back compared to what we have now, but they're certainly not retro consoles, and are still very much capable of churning out graphical masterpieces, especially when you consider their more up-to-date versions, those being the PS4 Pro, and I believe it's called the Xbox One X? Yeah, that's it. But this time around, was slightly over a year into the lifespan of both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and the Series S while I'm at it, and Sega is already getting on the train of taking advantage of both consoles' graphical capabilities. This could bring good tidings with the Sonic brand, as we could finally get a game that could rival Sonic Unleashed, possibly surpass it, in terms of being the best looking Sonic game, and it's just thrilling to think about. I mean, the stage already been set by the reveal trailer and the handful of screenshots that we can currently review. Now, all we need is the gameplay, which we haven't gotten to see yet. Even the first paragraph of this article says as such, we know so little about Sonic Frontiers right now, even though we're on the year the game is supposed to release. So at the moment, its release window is approximate. It says it will release during the holiday season 2022, but that's not an exact release date, at least not in my book, which leaves some room for a potential delay. But I already promised y'all I wouldn't bring that up again because the game had already been delayed once from 2021 to this year, so another delay is definitely not all that likely to happen. Anyway, back to the article. The writer of this article was in direct contact with Sega, so he was able to get some input from the leading creative director of Sonic Team, Kashi Azuka. It is one such comment he had to share. We're excited to bring the game onto next-gen consoles, as both the visual and technical gameplay elements will be elevated on the newest platforms. As games are beginning to be released natively onto next-gen, it's exciting to be a part of the wave that will really deliver on the full potential of these consoles. High fidelity, high speed, and high energy games. Yo, I don't think I'm ready to see how clean a Sonic game is going to look natively on my brand new Xbox! <laughs> However, I do feel some degree of concern for those that have yet to upgrade to a current console because this suggests that their focus is entirely on next-gen consoles. The game will be available via backwards compatibility to both the previous console generation and the Nintendo Switch, but I'm pretty sure the sacrifices will have to be made so that the game can run effectively on those platforms, especially in the case of the Switch, which is no graphical powerhouse, and yet still an impressive library of games to be completely fair. More than likely, they may have to go the route of using cloud gaming, like what was done with the Kingdom Hearts series, much to the ire of a large part of the fanbase. And understandably so, because as I understand it, cloud gaming is not the most reliable method to use for playing video games. 
I haven't ever tried it myself, and frankly, if it's 100% dependent on the internet, I'm already imagining an experience that's akin to what I've had on the PlayStation Now service via the PlayStation 4, and it wasn't too great for me then, so yeah, cloud gaming will definitely be little to no better. So if you're looking forward to experiencing Frontiers on the Switch, you may need to prepare yourself for the worst. I mean, then again, they're able to switch OLED, so maybe it won't be as catastrophic as I'm predicting, but who knows, right? The bulk of the article consists of information that we already know about, including how Sonic Frontiers will be set across a group of open-ended environments that make up the Starfall Islands. Nevertheless, there were some interesting things written here, but I couldn't help noticing. One of these is that Sonic Team is essentially working from scratch here, reworking all of Sonic's core movements and actions to better fit the expanded playable space. From Izuka's perspective, there were lessons learned from 2017's Sonic Forces, but the ambition behind Sonic Frontiers has pushed the team to reconsider everything. Izuka then goes on to say that bringing Sonic's signature speed and combat abilities to life into larger areas is among Sonic Team's greatest challenges. We focused on bringing Sonic to the next level and ensuring that he's fully represented as the character that fans know and love, while still making his new form exciting. We pay extremely close attention to getting all the little Sonic details right, to make sure that Sonic's signature speed and characteristics remain consistent across every gaming iteration. With Sonic Frontiers, we'll introduce new combat styles to bring Sonic's signature dexterity onto the battlefield, and the new exploration options obviously play into its iconic speedy nature. These new combat styles that Izuka mentioned may well be the direct confirmation of a common detail that was shared across a multitude of leagues for Frontiers, the mention of a skill tree. Now, whether this will be implemented as a skill tree or something else entirely remains to be seen, but it definitely implies that Sonic's gameplay will be taken in all new directions. Finally, we can get a moveset that isn't just his modern moveset that's been repeating since Sonic Unleashed. You know, his wall jump, his boost, his spin dash. Well, not his spin dash, that was allocated to classic Sonic regenerations, but still. And the stomp, and well, so on and so forth. We finally get to see Sonic style in the opposition in all new ways, and yo, that is exciting to think about. I believe thinking back to that brief teaser clip we got during the Sonic Central Direct back in May 2021, we may have been given a glimpse of one of those new abilities, and I believe it was named the Spin Cycle. We never saw it in a gameplay perspective, just a cinematic perspective, so we don't entirely know what this move is capable of, but I think one leak described it as sort of an attack where you draw a circle around a group of enemies and then cause them to be buffeted with winds, destroying them outright. It would be close to reminiscent of the Blue Tornado team move that you see during Sonic Heroes, but implemented in a new way. That's how I'm thinking of it anyway, and yeah, it would definitely fit the nature of Sonic's abilities. And then there's these new exploration options that were mentioned. This wouldn't be entirely new, but you might remember Knuckles being able to dig underground with the use of a shovel claw in the adventure games. Sonic could do something very similar to that, where he digs circles into the ground by spin dashing into it over and over, and potentially revealing new areas. I'd certainly like to see him pull off something like that. Furthermore, having incredible physics in his movement would be key to having a great game that is bent on exploration. Like, I'm envisioning Sonic running along walls and then jumping in such a way that it carries him an extremely far distance across the map. Oh my god, that is intoxicating to think about. I also want to backtrack to a previous paragraph in the article, which asks if Sonic Frontiers will be set throughout a fully open world similar to, and I'm sure you're tired of hearing about this game by now, Breath of the Wild, or where the various biomes of Starfall Island will be self-contained. By this, I assume they mean that when you leave one island to go into another, the game will temporarily fade to black and then return to normal with a brand new island ready for Sonic to explore. In other words, a transition. But with what the current gen console are capable of, or next gen if you want to call them that still, seeing a transition isn't 100% complete. I should like to think that such transitions won't be necessary, but as the article says, Sega have been careful with their language so far, referring to the 2022 release as being set in the franchise's first ever open zone inspired experience, or explaining that it will offer open zone freedom. Izuka didn't offer any further details other than that more will be shared soon. Whatever option they go with, I'm fine with, but I think it's Sega's trying to drive the point home that Sonic Frontiers is meant to be an open-ended, high-velocity Sonic game, 
the inclusion of loading screens would detract from that effect. If those were to be included, it would likely detract from the overall presentation of Frontiers. So, while it won't necessarily freak out if we do get loading screens, I hope they're at least minimal or preferably non-existent. And with the current console technology available to us, I'm confident that this will be our reality. I play Sonic Unleashed on the Series S for one, and the loading time for that game were dramatically reduced to like 2 seconds or so, which was a huge improvement for how it used to run on the 360. I've also played current generation games on the Series S, and the loading time for that game were reduced dramatically as well. The author of this article expressed a similar wish, saying that he hoped we're able to race through beautiful dense forests, sparkling waterfalls, and sizzling desert expanses without breaking a sweat or hitting a loading screen. Hopefully the last generation consoles will allow for this experience as well, but as I said earlier, some sacrifices may have to be made for Frontier to run effectively on them, especially in the case of a Nintendo Switch, so all I can say is, here's hoping for the best. We theorize that Sonic Frontiers had seen at least three years of development time since 2019. You might remember the concept leaks that came up not too long ago, and the second to last paragraph of this article backs that up. It said the Sonic team has been working on this open zone realm and compass within Sonic Frontiers for coming up on three years now. It also goes on to repeat information we already know, that the project is being led by Morio Kishimoto and Sachiko Karamura, and that Ian Flynn will be penning the storyline for Frontiers, which talks about how Sonic will be in a race against time to defeat his evil nemesis Dr. Eggman. So, I was under the impression that the Titans would be the primary threat in Frontiers rather than Eggman, who was simply meddling with technology that he wasn't meant to mess with? Hmm. I could be wrong though. It's not like we've seen the storyline presented in full anyway. All in all, this article revealed nothing groundbreaking in particular, so I don't expect this video to be all that informative, but we did go for a week without discussing Frontiers, so I needed to fix that, you know? But it did reveal some promising insight on what Takashi Azuka and the rest of Sonic Team have in mind for Frontiers, including this apparent revision to Sonic's combat capabilities and his movement options. We've seen Sonic perform a long list of cool stunts over the 30 years he's been featured in video games, and to see a possible expansion to that list after such a long time is, needless to say, exciting to think about. What else do you think we'll get to see Sonic do in Sonic Frontiers? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. As for the article, I'll be leaving a link to it in the description below if you'd like to check it out for yourself. It's a solid article overall, apart from one major gripe I have with it. For the last time, Sonic did not struggle to find his footing in 3D. Bro, you did play Sonic Adventure, right? Did you? If not, then go play that and Adventure 2 and then get back to me. And then it goes on to list a series of games considered to be low points in the Sonic series. 06 and 4 is this I can agree with, but for God's sake, let go of 06 already. That game is going on 16 years in age this November. We have heard it so many times before. Yes, it set the Sonic series back, we get it, but if you haven't noticed, we're bouncing back better than ever, so give it a rest, for Christ's sake! And, and, what is this? What the living hell is this? Is Sonic Unleashed seriously lived as a game considered to be a failure for Sonic? Really? Really? You're really gonna go there? I guess the influx of people buying an Xbox just to play Sonic Unleashed and Generations, I might add, in 60 frames per second went completely unnoticed. I should like to hope that's not the case though. But before that, the game did exist for 13 years. And while some were a little slow to catch on to how great a game it truly is, a practical shiny example of the modern Sonic formula, they eventually came around. You guys might remember last year that people were heavily requesting a remaster of Unleashed after Sonic Colors Ultimate was announced, and for the record, that's the hope I'm still nurturing in my heart. Incidentally, I made a video about the possibility of a Sonic Unleashed Ultimate being in the works, if y'all like to give it a look. Whether or not it's in the works now, I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty sure that's on Sega's mind given a sequence of events that will be referenced in that video, along with others that happened thereafter. But I guess it wouldn't be an article by a non-Sonic News site if it didn't take the time to remind us after why he was once considered to be oh so bad. I mean if he's so bad, then why is he still such a memorable character? Give me a break. Not to worry though my fellow Sonic fans, I will trust you all to set the record straight. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, 
Hope you enjoyed my thoughts on the latest article from Games Radar about Sonic Frontiers, and I'm also hoping that we'll get to see more about the game from Sega real soon. We are closing on the end of January, so it should be about that time for them to break their silence again. If you enjoyed everything you saw in this video, let me know your thoughts with your likes and comments down below. And don't forget to hit that sub button and ring that bell to stay up to date on everything about Sonic. Thank you again for watching, and I will see y'all next time. Until then, peace out, blue blurs, or life. Take care. <laughs> <laughs>